up guys, welcome to Johnny Plays, welcome to the channel, thank you guys so much for clicking on this video, yes this is not a grind of glory series, yes I haven't uploaded in a minute, but here we are back with uh, this new series which I will be starting which is my FIFA 18 Real Sociedad career mode, so if you guys are interested in watching that please stay tuned, if you guys want to see episode 2, episode two uh, go ahead and drop a like, and drop a comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, hope you guys, hope you guys enjoy this, uh, thanks. Okay, boys, yes, we are starting a Real Sociedad career mode. Why am I starting a Real Sociedad career mode? Mainly because I did want to start an English Premier League career mode, but that did not go as I wanted to just because of the fact that um, everybody's doing one. Everyone's doing an English Premier League career mode, and it's really annoying. If you guys see me look over there, that is because that is the gameplay, which I am watching along with you guys while I'm commentating. But yeah, like I've said, everyone's doing an EPL career mode. Every team has an EPL career mode, you know, from Burnley to Manchester City. Everyone's doing a career mode. So I said, yo, let me go into La Liga. Let me see if I can find a team that no one's doing a career mode on. And actually, someone is doing a career mode on Real Sociedad. Um, it is in French, though. So I thought, yo, I can just do an English commentary or you know what I'm saying. I don't think it would bother that person. Uh, and plus kind of differentiates me from the other career modes because I don't want to be doing a career mode Everybody else is doing or playing with the team that other people are playing as well It just doesn't seem as fun to me uh, I just want to give you guys different content and all that good stuff But I also say that I actually have a pretty solid team boys I didn't even notice this in real life or in the game I was like wow I also say that they probably need a lot of help But actually they are in Europa League They have multiple young talents in their team and they're pretty squatted up uh, They do have a couple of players which I do not see myself using in the future but also their first team the only actually player that I needed was a left back because the rest of the positions I was very happy with the player that was filling that position uh, here are our objectives which the board has set for us for the Euro League they want us to reach the final and for the domestic success they want us to finish in a Champions League place so the standards are set pretty high for us right here uh, as you can see most of those things are medium um, when it comes to the priority of it uh, and here are other players that I have transfer listed or that I want to get rid of uh, whether it's because of age because they're too low of a rating or I just don't simply want to use them or simply see them as some sort of factor in our team in the future of this Real Sociedad club uh, and here are the main players that I am looking for. A uh, first team left back, a promising winner, winger, excuse me, and a promising center midfielder. Those are the positions that I wanted to actually fill in because I felt like we needed more depth in the squad, which is why I'm looking for a promising winger and a promising center mid. But also, I really wanted to strengthen our squad at the same time, which is why I'm looking for that good, strong left back who's really going to add value to the squad now this is the training sessions which i will probably be doing throughout this series same players uh and here is us purchasing a scout future star because you should really purchase this because you never know what you will get out of this uh you guys will see later on who we get and here is the popular man of this episode i'm saying that because Mikel oyarzabal i think that's how you pronounce his name oyarzabal i'm just gonna call him Mikel. Uh, he gets multiple offers boys so many offers this man is really wanted and I actually didn't care about selling him as you can see Liverpool uh, offer 2.3 million and I go ahead into transfer negotiations just because I didn't see him as a crucial part or as somebody who added much value but later on in the episode you guys will find out what happens with the man need a water break hold up so we submit an offer of 36 million um, and Jurgen Klopp has none of it, boys. I'm going to tell you right now. He gets enraged and it just walks out. Uh, transfer negotiations and when you're trying to buy players or trying to re renew your players' contracts or when you're just trying to in transfer talks with another player, it it's so hard and it's nerve-wracking for me because I don't want to put in the wrong price and then they get all mad and just walk out and then I have to wait till the next transfer window to get that player. Here we go in our first game of the European International Cup. Absolutely destroyed to lose with a 5-0 in our first game as manager. Very, very happy about that one. Uh, we'll actually be putting out a lot of good results in this episode so we actually don't have any gameplay we will be simming a lot of games but we do have a lot of transfer stuff going on we get another offer from Mikel uh, from Bayern Munich and I think it was for 28 million I don't remember I did price him at 40 million and that is why their coach or whoever that was got very mad at us because 
they thought the price of him was too high. He replaced Sporting. And we actually tie that one, 1-1. One, one. Mikel scores himself. The man who is wanted gets on the score sheet in the 73rd minute to tie up this game for us. Undefeated in two games, one win and one draw. We get an offer from Anu... From, not from, an offer for Adnan Januzai for a one-year loan from Botafogo, the Brazilian team. But I was not having none of it, boys. I want to keep Adnan Januzai. He is a new player who Real Sociedad have acquired of. And I actually want to use him. He looks like a decent little card. Uh, get him back into the Adnan Januzai we knew a couple years ago when everyone was comparing him to the best footballers. I remember people would say like that him and Ronaldo had... like. I don't know if they had the same birthday or they debuted, but the, a lot of Ronaldo comparisons were happening with Adnan Januzai. Now, obviously, he's not going to reach that potential, but we want still. I feel like he still could be a good 80-something rated player. Third game of this episode, and we win 4-1 against West Ham. We're absolutely dominating these games, boy. We get an offer for Jao or John, John Batista. Sorry, 70 rated. 22 years old. Um, I know he's kind of on the older side, but still, I felt like he would at least reach mid 70s, maybe, and then we could sell him on for some money. We get an offer from Rot Watford, and I'm gonna absolutely reject it because all the offers from Byron and Liverpool really made me notice how of how much of a valuable piece Mikel could be for our team. So I was gonna go ahead and use him. Didn't really mind. Fourth game of this episode. Another simulation, sorry about that again, but we do win 3-1, and like I've, I don't know if I've actually mentioned this, boys, uh, we are looking for a left back, by the way, Johnny and Jordan Lukaku are on our short list, uh, but I don't know if I've mentioned this, this, this series won't be post-commentary based, this will be live commentary based, episode 2, episode 3, hopefully they are all live commentary, but this one is post-commentary because of the fact that so much is happening in this episode, as you guys can see, we're simming four games. We have so much transfer stuff going on, and I just felt live commentary would have really slowed that down because I've noticed in my experience with post commentary and live commentary as we went 3-0 against Besiktas. Live commentary really slows down the gameplay. Uh, there's a lot more talking from me. Things are kind of moving at a slow pace, but post commentaries really get things done. So this number episode number one is kind of an episode where I really wanted to get a lot of things done. Uh, as you can see, we finished all our games. Besiktas was the final for the European Intercon. Inter European International Cup, I think it was called. We have like about a month until our first game, and I really wanted to get some transfers in. I really wanted to bring in some players to strengthen the squad. Another offer for Mikel, water break, and we do reject it. 28.4 million. Woo! 28.4 million. 28.4 million for buyer, uh, from Bayer Leverkusen, boys. Uh, but yeah, I did have to reject that one. I'm not interested in selling Mikel, as I said. Jordan Lukaku or Johnny? Uh, uh, I really wanted to go for Lukaku, but I felt like Johnny was more of a realistic um, approach to this. Uh, we do not want... I consider paying that... Um, I forgot what it's called. The $26 million just to go straight into talks, but I felt like I could pick him up for cheaper. Like I've said, um, uh, like I was just explaining, I mean... I did go for Johnny because I do try to go for a more of a realistic standpoint on these career modes. So I don't automatically buy like some English player from a Spanish team. You usually don't see that. So I usually don't go for that stuff. As you can see, I'm Real Sociedad. Johnny plays for Celta Vigo. I felt like it was a realistic transfer. Even though Johnny's their starting left back, Real Sociedad are a bigger team than Celta Vigo. Uh, no offense to any Celta Vigo fans there, but still... Yeah, we they do accept our offer of I forgot who it was. It was a what it was a player and like eleven million coins, coins. I've been playing too much Ultimate Team. Eleven million dollars, and here he is. We do actually pick up the man, Johnny Otto. We will be calling him Johnny because Johnny Otto is kind of weird. So just straight up Johnny, uh, joins our team and he will be our starting left back. This is what our team is looking at. So so happy with that defense. That defense will last us maybe three years i don't even know if we're gonna even be going through three years in this series i don't really know what i'm aiming for in this series uh but we will find out soon maybe you guys can tell me in the comments what you guys you guys want me to win a treble if you guys just want me to win la liga the champions league just let me know in the comments down below uh but here we actually pick up etebu left mid don't even know what club he plays for honestly apologies to anybody any fans of those of that club if you guys know what club that is, please inform me. Sorry for the ignorance. I just honestly don't know what club that is. And obviously, this has to be some sort of realistic transfer just because of Real Sociedad are a bigger um, club than whatever the club that is. Just because a club is bigger, I'm not trying to say that that they... 
Oh, I don't even know what I'm explaining. I feel like I'm just digging myself in this hole. When I say realistic transfer, I don't mean transfers that are happening in real life, by the way. I'm just saying that transfers that kind of make sense. You know, uh, in this case, Ethebo plays for a small club and he's going to a big club like Real Sociedad. That happens a lot in football. So that's kind of what I mean in, in when I say realistic transfers. I don't mean like... Oh, in real life, for Real Sociedad, we're actually trying to get Johnny, and that happened. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, that may happen in the series, but I don't really base my transfers off of that. I just base off of uh, nationalities, stuff like that. I'm rambling on too much. We sell Sergio Canales. We accept that offer of, what was that, uh, $16.5 million. I actually accidentally accepted that offer. I did not mean to do so. Uh, I actually wanted to go into transfer negotiations and put up the price for him a little bit i wasn't planning on sell selling sergio canales in the beginning of this episode or when i was recording this i decided to do so because really looking at sergio canales 79 rated 24 years old yeah that's awesome but i really didn't wasn't excited about playing with him he didn't seem like a player that i was really excited to play with here is our future scout star or something a, v a villa i think his name was a left back why a left back we could have gotten a forward a winger a center attacking mid we got a left back. Maybe he'll become the best left back in football. Who actually knows, boys? But here we are. Sergio Canales does leave the club. Uh, and we also get a transfer offer for Carlos Vela from Manchester United for $23 million. I'm going to reject that because Carlos Vela will be another very strong player in our squad. Someone who's going to add a lot of value to our Real Sociedad squad. I uh, don't know if he's going to stay for us in our squad for a long time because he is, I think, 28, 27, kind of later 20s. Uh, so we will see how he does perform this season for us, boys. Uh, we get a lot of offers for El Estondo and, and Mikel. So I was making sure I wanted to keep those players. I uh, should have blocked offers looking back at it, but I was not thinking of that in the moment because sometimes EA throws or FIFA sends you like these crazy offers that you just simply can't reject because of the amount of money. Here we are about to sell. I think his name is Agretsk. Agretz, Agritz, I don't know how to say his name. He is one of the players we transfer listed. 30 years old, 76 rated, and we sell him for 10 million. I think that was a great, great move for us, honestly, because he wasn't going to play any games for us. And getting him for 10 million, I'm glad with that. We get an offer from Spurs of 45.9 million. I was really contemplating should I accept this. I said no. I felt like William Hus Jose was at least going to grow. He was going to definitely bang some goals for us. Or I was hoping so. He would bang some goals for us uh, this season. We get an offer for or the Odrizolo. Oh my god. I'm going to struggle so much with these names, boys. From Levante. Going to reject that because he seems like a decent young player. Uh, and we actually get an offer for Carlos Martinez. He's like 31 years old, I think. Yeah, 31 year years old. Right back, we're gonna offer a 4.8 million, and I actually wanted to sell this man. 31 years old, 76 rated, not high rated, very old guy. No offense to any 31 years old there, just saying in FIFA career mode, he's a very old guy. There, uh, he, I didn't really see any plans to use him in our squad. Go ahead and sell him to uh, I think it was Anderlecht, I don't even know. These post commentaries are tough, boys. We get another offer for El Estondo, but I am going to go ahead and reject that because we are not looking to sell our young right back. Now, we do have to find someone to replace Sergio Canales, and here they are. Here are the list of center midfielders or center attacking midfielders that I found that I was contemplating I could get them or not. The main two are right here at the bottom two, uh, coincidentally. Fred and Bernard. Now, I want. I went originally with Fred just because I thought Fred, 80 rated, 24 years old. Maybe I could pick him up for cheap because he's playing at Chaktar, but that does not end up happening, boys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I offer 28.6 million. They reject that one, and they actually counter offer with 36 million, I believe, and I did not see him, uh, him being Fred, being worth that type of money so I go ahead and just end the negotiations and I go ahead and actually go after Bernard Bernard in past FIFA's used to be like kind of a hyped player but no one you really used him because he was overpriced uh he was always overpriced on FIFA 18 like not only FIFA 18 but any FIFA career mode if you would go after Bernard he was really overpriced I never really saw a career mode where people actually use Bernard and I think what kind of was the reason was because he was overpriced and was because kind of his height because he is kind of short I think he's five six maybe I'm not even sure five six five eight somewhere around that area uh, So yeah, 
But you know, I want I'm, I'm starting trends out here, boys. So I wanted to go ahead and get him 20. 20.9 million is what they were offering that is I think that's a little bit above his base value So I thought that was a great deal for me. So 20.9 million is what we're gonna pick up the Brazilian man uh, And here we are in contract negotiations again The nerves are kicking in because if you offer too low of money They will become pissed and walk off, but we actually do sign him boys We put pen to paper and Bernard will be signing with the Real Sociedad. Yo, that team is looking so good Johnny left back, Inigo Martinez, Llorente center back, uh, Elustondo right back, Iermendi, Pardo, and Bernard as our midfielders. Oh, I'm getting so many hiccups. Mikel, Jose, Jose, William Jose, excuse me, and uh, Carlos Vela as our, as our forwards. That seems like a real, real nice team. The only real problem with the team, I would say, myself, is the uh, squad depth. We don't have a lot of bear. We have... A lot of players that are young, but they're low rating. We don't have crazy squad depth. So I'm going to try to integrate uh, integrate that next episode. Hopefully, we can accomplish that. Uh, three transfers in one in one transfer window is a lot for a team, though. So I kind of want to keep things realistic. I don't know. No, I don't know if I want to actually go out and add some more players to the team to add some more depth. If you guys think I should, go ahead and comment down below. And also comment down below what position you guys think I should strengthen uh, and what... And yeah, what player should I chase after? Uh, what should I do? Just crazy things like that. And here are the crazy transfers that have been happening in this transfer window. This is the craziest transfer window I've seen in career mode FIFA 18 at all. Uh, if you guys want to see some of the crazy transfers, go ahead and pause that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I know it's a post commentary. Uh, I feel like career mode videos aren't supposed to be live commentary. I don't know why. It's just I feel like live commentary for career mode works very well. So episode two will definitely be live commentary. I'll be recording that right after this, uh, and I'll probably read your comments by the time I'm before or after episode two comes out. So go ahead and comment down some things, guys. Anything things? If you guys are excited for the series, go ahead and comment it down. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay safe. Woo!